Welcome to the 28th edition of Cool Tools, where I get to show you some useful and interesting tools that we use here at the Stomping Ups Woodworking Journal Shop. This time we have what may be the best machinist rule out there, a combination tool for hand tool woodworkers, a clever combination square that's come back from the dead, another reason diamonds are forever, a two-part putty that functions like epoxy, an amazing shrinking assembly table, and my favorite glue dispenser. As always, we'll be moving quickly to fit all of it in, so I'm placing links to each cool tool in the video description below so you can find answers to any questions that I may not have anticipated. Now let's get started. Shinmo rules may be the best kept secret in measuring tools. The quality and precision is outstanding and the price is almost ridiculously low for a precise Japanese made tool. This is a six inch Starrett rule. Everybody agrees that Starrett's a top brand in measuring tools and it is a nice rule. This is a six inch Shinwa rule. They both feature etched scales that are crisp, clear, and will not wear off. They both have precise graduations that are easy to read. They both have scales on the ends for greater versatility. They're both hardened stainless steel with a nice baked on satin finish to eliminate glare. Honestly, if it weren't for the brand names marked on the other face, I don't believe the average woodworker would know which ruler was $30 and which one was $13. That's right, the Shinwa rule is less than half the price of the Starrett. In fact, if you don't need the little scales on the ends, you can get the same Shinwa quality for a third of the price, 10 bucks. Of course, the real reason I like them are the options. They offer several versions so you can find the one that best suits you. My favorite is the 4 hour model because while I may occasionally need the fine 16th and 32nd inch scales on one side, most of the time I'm working in 8ths and 16ths, so I love the uncluttered, easy to read obverse. I think this is more suited to a woodworker. Of course, not all woodworkers live in the US, so they make metric versions for the rest of the world with millimeters on one side and a fine imperial scale on the other. They also have larger versions in 12 inch, 24 inch, and 36 inch, and some pocket versions with conversions and other references on the back. All are available in either metric or imperial. Don't let the prices fool you. Remember, these are not those typical cheap stamped out rules, even if they're priced like they may be. They are of machinist quality, precisely ground and etched with a premium finish. I'll put a link below so you can check them out. The Bridge City Toolworks MT1 has quickly become one of my favorite layout tools. The MT, I believe, stands for multi-tool because it combines several important tools into one. It's a bevel gauge for setting up machinery or laying out odd angles. It's a dovetail marker with both 8 to 1 and 6 to 1 options. And it's a saddle square for carrying lines precisely around a corner. Like all Bridge City tools, the MT1 is of top quality. The body is aircraft grade aluminum and the blade is stainless steel. It has a matte finish over the whole thing that's both beautiful and easy to maintain. And you can mark the blade with a pencil and then wipe it off when you don't need the reference anymore. I've been using an MT1 for two years now and it's replaced three tools that I used to consider my favorite. I'll link to it below because I think you're going to want to check it out along with a lot of the other clever stuff that's on the Bridge City site. While we're on the subject of layout tools, I have one more for you. This is a magnetic combination square that I've been using for about 10 years. It's not the only combination square I use, but it may be the one I reach for the most because I love how fast it is to adjust and even take out the rule and put it back in without messing with that little spring-loaded mechanism that's typically found on combination squares. I've talked about this in the past, but unfortunately, the company that used to make them stopped making them several years ago, so you haven't been able to get one for quite a while. But a couple months back, a viewer pointed me to another company that has started selling them. So I bought one of the Capro versions just to make sure that it was the same quality and it's pretty much the same square. So this is great news because for quick layout, you cannot beat this thing. I'm not sure I would consider it as precise as a high-end Starrett, but I've never been disappointed in the accuracy. The only thing I don't like is that you have to be careful not to bump the end of the rule, especially if you have it extended to a precise distance from the body because the magnets aren't going to lock it in place like a regular combination square. 
If you wanted one when I first showed it a few years back and you couldn't get it, or you want another one, I'll put a link below. But I grab it quick. I suspect they may sell out fairly rapidly. Another tool I've been using for many years is my Tormek water-cooled sharpening system. And for most of the time, I've sharpened with the standard stone wheel, which has worked just fine. I really had no complaints. But then I discovered their diamond wheels and everything changed. Let me explain. Unlike a stone, a diamond wheel does not wear away. It never needs truing. It never needs dressing. The surface always remains flat and square and the wheel diameter always remains exactly the same. This is important because I like to record and repeat certain jig settings and this way they will never have to be altered due to the wheel becoming smaller with wear over time. And my tool edges will never be affected by a groove or uneven wear across the surface of the wheel. The coarse stone is about 360. It's for rapid steel removal. This might be my favorite of the three because it really speeds up the process when I have a lot of work to do with an edge. I think if I could only get one grit of diamonds, I might choose the coarse stone and use it as a complement to my regular stone when I need to do that extra grinding. They also have a fine grit stone, which is about 600. It's a good balance between speed and edge quality. It's not as fast as the coarse wheel, but it'll get the job done and the edge it leaves behind is ready to be moved right to the leather stropping wheel. They also have an extra fine 1200 grit wheel. This is not for fast steel removal. It's for tools that must always have a razor sharp edge, such as carving gouges and smoothing planes and really nice kitchen knives. You can get a razor sharp edge with the fine wheel, but you'll have to do more stropping afterwards. The extra fine wheel reduces time spent on the stropping wheel. While it is really nice to have all three grits, you don't need to invest in all three all at once. You might just add one grit to complement your regular stone wheel. The Tarmac Diamond wheels are not inexpensive upgrades, but if you use them properly and you don't abuse them, they should last many, many years, maybe even a lifetime. The grit also continues down the side of the wheel, so you have a nice large surface for flat grinding when you don't want a hollow grind. I don't want to spend all day going into all the technical details, but I will link to a video below that answers some frequently asked questions, such as why coat them in diamond instead of CBN, uh, why they're steel instead of aluminum core, and how they were developed. I think you'll find that very interesting. Wonder Putty from Woodturner's Wonders is like sculpting clay which hardens like epoxy. It may be used for all sorts of things, but in the workshop, it excels as a filler, both on flat surfaces and turn projects, such as bowls. It comes in two parts that are kneaded together to activate the chemical reaction, which cures it without shrinking or cracking in about an hour, and then it becomes nice and durable and hard. Don't let the gray color fool you. It may be transformed by adding paints and stains and powders and pigments. For example, here some blue oil paint is kneaded directly into the putty. For lighter colors, you may first knead in white to create a neutral base, then add lighter tones with paint or dry pigments, metal flake, mica powder, whatever you may put into clear epoxy for a decorative effect, except this doesn't have the runs and other issues that come with liquid filler. It won't completely replace liquid epoxy filler, especially for those fine cracks that do require something thin to seep down in, but it really shines as a large crack or not filler. It's definitely worth checking out at the link below the video. I first saw the Centipede work stand at a woodworking show in Atlanta several years ago. It wasn't a Bora booth. It was in, I think, the Southern Woodworkers booth or the Toolmasters booth. It wasn't for sale, but just as a portable fixture. In fact, I and other YouTubers were sitting around it to meet fans. Its clever design and durability really stood out to me then, and I immediately understood its potential as a portable work surface, both inside and outside the shop. The Bora Centipede comes in three sizes, each of which collapse into a compact little carrying bag. Even the big 4x8 version stores in about one square foot of floor space, but it instantly expands to the size of a full sheet of plywood. Their 2x4 and 4x4 versions are even more compact, but they may be combined to create as large a surface as you need, and the accessories make them even more versatile than sawhorses in my opinion. They're also super strong. 
The big one supports up to 6,000 pounds. You could park a full-size pickup truck on top. I use them for outdoor projects or when I need an extra work surface inside the shop, such as for finishing or big project assembly. I think they'd be ideal for job sites, for camping, for craft shows, tailgating, anytime you need a table that collapses and stows away in a small place, because the centipede system is all about portability. It's not often that I find such a unique, versatile workshop accessory like this. I highly recommend you check them out at the link below. I'm not sure why we haven't featured this on Cool Tools before, because I've been using Gluebots for years. Here's what I like about them. They're easy to refill, so I can buy glue in bulk and save money. It features a dual chamber that pushes glue up from the bottom, which makes it possible to dispense glue both in horizontal and vertical positions, even when it's only partially full. When you finish dispensing the glue, it sucks the excess back inside so it doesn't drip. It has an actual cap instead of one of those annoying pull up and push back down nozzles that have to be regularly disassembled to clean out old glue. It comes with other accessories such as fine tips and a yoke to help keep the bead in the center of an edge, all of which are replaceable if you lose one or wear it out. And it comes in 16 ounce sizes, which I think is the most useful, but also little four and six ounce sizes. It's worth mentioning that the old versions had this hard plastic cap and it does allow a little bit of air to seep in. So if you let it sit for a long time, it could dry a little bit of the glue in the nozzle. But as good companies tend to do, FastCap seems to have listened to customer feedback because the new versions have softer kind of silicone caps that seal much better. It's just another example of what makes the GlueBot unique. While regular glue bottles are designed by glue manufacturers, these are designed by woodworkers who actually use them in real world situations and know what works best and what doesn't. Seriously, once you use one of these, you'll never want to go back to those regular glue bottles again. I'll link to them below this video. That's it for this edition of Cool Tools. Don't forget to check out the links below and we'll see you next time. Wait, don't go yet. If you're new here, please subscribe and remember to ring the bell. I would really appreciate that. Give us a thumbs up or better yet, leave us a comment. I always read them. And be sure to check out the latest issue of Stumpy Nub's Woodworking Journal. It's always packed with tips, tricks, and tutorials designed to make you a better woodworker.